Hello, and welcome to Module 7, OpenStack Storage Services. It's important for us to have a good understanding of what OpenStack storage is, not just on the project side, but in general, how storage is used. We're going to go through a brief overview of things. We can't really dive too deep, but we'll do what we can. Storage itself can be a confusing topic for many who are brand new to OpenStack or brand new to cloud environments. It probably rivals networking as one of the more confusing pieces of a cloud product. Within OpenStack, at this time, there are two storage products. One is called Cinder and the other is called Swift. Each of these projects is a standalone core project in fact, they've been around for quite some time. What becomes confusing is that we'll often hear about three types of storage. And this is where people get lost. We have ephemeral storage, block storage, and object storage. Let's start at the beginning. It's good for us to know what ephemeral storage is. It's not often in your day that you get to use the word ephemeral, but now that you're in a cloud environment, you'll get to say it all the time. Nova instances are booted with what we call an ephemeral volume. When you terminate a Nova instance, it will permanently remove the machine. In effect, this ephemeral volume is temporary. The size of an ephemeral volume is chosen by the flavor that you assign to it at boot time. So when you have an ephemeral volume, you simply size it as you need. You can actually expand it as you need down the road. But again, when it's terminated, it's completely removed. If we had a CentOS image, we could attach a 20 gig assignment to it using a flavor. If we wanted to make one slightly larger, that's not a problem at all we just simply make it a 40 gig instance. Or if we knew we had something that perhaps had a lot more logging or storage that were required, we could assign an 80 gig flavor to it. So this way we would get an 80 gig ephemeral volume. Now remember, these are ephemeral volumes, so they will disappear at termination. When we talk about flavors, it's not quite like Baskin Robbins. I wish there was 31 flavors, but in fact, in our case, there's only five. You could have 31 flavors if you so desired, but I doubt that your business is gonna have a use case for all those flavors. As you can see by the ones here, these match up to common AWS sizing as well. We often refer to tiny or large or extra large or small. And they're ultimately all relative to each other. There's no industry standard that we're, we're pitting ourselves against or no ISO standard. But these are the sizing that you're going to see when we have an OpenStack environment. So a tiny instance by default flavor has a 512 meg of RAM and it has one virtual CPU and a one gig ephemeral volume. Luckily, CentOS and CIROS and all these very small Linux editions really don't take up that much space. You could use then two gigs and if you wanted to go up to small, medium, et cetera, et cetera. You can see by the extra large, 16 gigs of RAM, eight virtual CPUs with 160 gigabyte ephemeral volume. That's a pretty big machine. It's not gonna be common that you're gonna see that in a lot of environments, but just the same, they're out there, which is why it's in the default flavor set. These are all completely adjustable in your cloud environment. So if you choose that you wanted to get rid of the large and extra large because you didn't want to have your consumers have the option to use those, you can absolutely do so. Now that we understand what ephemeral volumes is, let's take a look at the next step. 